Hello, happy Wednesday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour here. And I work on projects uh, from beginning to end uh, so you can be part of the whole process along the way and work with me and just come and chit chat. Uh, so tonight we are hopping back on to the Splendid Sampler 2 quilt along. Here is the book for it, the Splendid Sampler 2. And uh, we are going to work on the Hello Sunshine block because frankly, Maybe this will bring in the sunshine to our spring here because we haven't had much of it yet. And it was gloomy, gloomy, gloomy again today. We had a little bit of sunshine the second half of the day yesterday and it was awesome and I need more. <laughs> so we are going to work on, on that Hello Sunshine block. So this has some paper piecing, some foundation paper piecing, some, uh, some applique, some embroidery. It's got a whole pile of stuff. So, all right, we're gonna start with the foundation paper piecing part of it tonight. I have not done that in a while, so that's always a, a technique that it, you know, I, it takes me a little brain teaser to jump back into it. So let's see how we do. All right, I'm gonna flip you around. It's great seeing everyone pop in again. Uh, tell me how your weekend was. Uh, I'm gonna turn you guys around. All right. Back to the Splendid Sampler. Okay, there we are. So here is the Hello Sunshine block. Pretty adorable. So we need to tr cut pieces for our background. That's where we're, or our little sun background. That's where we're gonna start first. So let's see, I have photocopies of the sun. So this is that from that template sheet in the back. I photocopied this uh, for later because this is going to be for the embroidery and the applique. Right now I need the piece right next to it is this piece, the foundation paper piece part. So the sunshine center. It's going to be the center here. Yeah, no, Joe, I, I, I agree. I think this is going to be pretty easy for paper piecing. Uh, and actually for for this, they recommend in the, in the instructions to have seven rectangles that are two inches by five inches all ready to go. So we might do that instead. So what I'm doing now is I am just cutting on that dotted line so I don't have to deal with all the rest of this paper. But then we will get going. Uh, you can see on this block, it's numbered. It's got one through seven. That is the number of fabrics, or it's like, it's the number of pieces that we'll be sewing on here. And it's also the order that we will be sewing. So we're gonna start at that bottom edge and end up at the top. This is so little. In my head, this paper piecing was a little bit bigger than this, but it's a little, little square here. All right, I do not need these pieces. They can go to the floor. All right, let's pick some fabrics. So I think in general, uh, I'm gonna have white for my background. So I'll just lay that down just so we can see what the colors look like on it. And then uh, I'm using white because I'm using white for most of my backgrounds. But let's see what yellows I can pop out of here. So all of my, all of my um, fabrics are pretty much in the yellow range. So I'm gonna just right away pick out a few. But here's the problem. I am having, uh, I'm like, I'm down to like very limited pieces at this point. We could do one of these little pale, pale yellow. So assorted yellow prints. So I could actually probably get a couple out of here. In the design, it looks like uh, looks like a couple of the prints are repeated. You don't have to do that, but maybe we do. What else do we got going on here? Oh, here's here's a better piece of that. So all right, I'm just gonna grab what I can here. I think this is maybe a little bright. This could maybe be 
our outside. Just trying to stick to the pale yellows a little bit now. Wow, we really, I really don't have much left here, you guys. Crazy! We might, it, uh, it might be the point where we start injecting more yellow fabrics, if I can find them, into, into the quilt. Yeah, that's it for, oh, here we have this little piece too. That's kind of it for my yellows. The rest are kind of these tan colors. I have like a little bit of an orange here. But let's see what we can do with this. And I think I'm gonna actually even take out this piece. That's maybe a little too bright. I kind of like like these guys together. All right, so let's start there. Um, and this is what it'll look like on the white. Um, there is that the sun rays that will kind of frame it. So that could be, you know, a color that's a little bit darker. And actually I need a color that will actually fit. So I don't have that much fabric left, so does this one even go all the way around? Yeah, this one does. So you know what, I'm gonna just straight reserve this fabric for the sun's rays, this applique right here, because I don't think many of these other pieces are big enough to do it. So I'm gonna reserve this for the rays, and now we're left with these uh, five pieces, so we'll repeat a couple of them. I'll repeat the ones that we have a lot of, um, which makes me think I think I have the most of this. So I'm gonna just start, oh, we have kind of a lot of this pale yellow too. All right, so those two will be my doubles. All right, don't need the white. Yeah, I hope everyone is staying safe with all these storms everywhere. It's been kind of crazy, hasn't it? My brother and his wife are in the Kansas City area, and I think they had to deal with a little bit of all that tornado craziness. All right, so instead of cutting, just because I have limited fabric, instead of cutting my two inch by five inch pieces, I am going to just uh, cut as I go. So I'm gonna start with, let's just start with some of this, um, some of this yellow here. So I'm gonna just give it a little press. I'm gonna actually use this piece down here if I can. So I'm gonna actually, let's get over here so we can see both things at once. I had a nice Memorial Day though. I gotta go see uh, my parents and Chad the kitty and it was, it was very relaxing and nice. Okay, I'm gonna get my nice scissors out here as well. Oh man, flooding everywhere in uh, Oklahoma. I have friends who are homes are underwater. Oh my gosh, Gina, that's so frightening. All right, you guys, I'm smoked by you from wildfires. Goodness, too much stuff everywhere. All right, so let's take a look at this again. It is uh, one through seven. That's the order that we go in. And uh, so we're gonna start with this first piece here. So one thing we need to know for foundation paper piecing is the printed side, like the paper that we see here, that's actually the back. What we sew onto it, this will be the front. So the, you gotta think of this as the wrong side and the right side. So uh, I'm gonna put my fabric with the right side down. So this one's, it's a little hard to tell, but this is the wrong side up and the right side down. And then the, my uh, paper will go on top of that. So I can see, I can see the numbers here and the lines. And if I flip it, then that's the right side. So the right side and the wrong side. So what I wanna do to start out so instead of cutting a, a rectangle, just because, like I said, I'm, I have limited fabric, so I'm gonna do it this way instead. Uh, I need a piece, so we're dealing with this number one piece. I need a piece that's as big as this triangle here, plus a generous seam allowance. So we already have the quarter inch seam allowance on these two sides. I'm gonna just add a little bit more. And then I need you know, enough seam allowance for right here. So I can just kind of lift this up a little bit. Um, I'm actually gonna get my rotary cutter out. And it doesn't need to be 
perfect right now. Well, actually, yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to just grab a ruler here. This is a little goofy way of doing this, but bear with me. So I'm just mimicking that line and giving it a generous quarter inch seam allowance. And then I'm gonna just keep going here. All right. So this is gonna be my first piece. We have a uh, piece that's the right side is down and uh, I can lay my uh, number one area on that and it's as big as this shape plus a generous seam allowance. And I'm going to just put a dab of glue on here and that's what's gonna hold down piece number one. And piece number one will be done at this point. So the first piece in foundation piece, paper piecing is always similar to this. You just cut it to the size of, you know, that shape with a little extra seam allowance and glue it down and you're basically done. <laughs> so here is our first piece attached to our paper backing here. <laughs> Not much to that. So, all right, let's move on to the second piece. So uh, first I'm going to prep, uh, well, let's pick, let's pick what fabric we want to do first. So this is just on top. Why don't we do, do this one? Um, that looks pretty good. I'm going to just give it a little press just to get it all nice and flat. Okay. So I am going to grab a postcard here. So this is my, my little postcard. I like to have it handy for, uh, for some applique pieces and I like to have it re ready for foundation paper piecing. And why I like it is that it's a, just a thick piece of paper, right? So it doesn't bend very much. It's stiff, but it has a nice sharp edge to it yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay that on top of the piece we just did and then along with the line that's in between the piece that we just did and the next piece. So I'm going right along this edge here. Then I'm gonna fold up this paper along the edge and that's gonna reveal all of our extra seam allowance here. So you can see like it's a little bit smaller down here, it's big up here, it's definitely not a perfect quarter inch seam allowance. We're gonna remedy that right now. So you can take a, a ruler and the quarter inch line on your ruler, you can align with this folded fabric like that. And then you can trim. But what I'm going to use is I have my nice add a quarter ruler here. So this is uh, an add a quarter ruler. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Add I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, there we go, add a quarter. So what that is, it's a ruler that has a little lip on the end here. See how it bumps down? That lip is a quarter inch. So this bump out right here, I am just gonna bump that onto the folded paper. And since we have the postcard on there still, it just kind of stops. So like I could do this with my eyes closed cause I can just feel it hit, hit the edge, right? So now I can trim all this off and I'll know that I'll have a perfect quarter inch seam allowance there. All right, and a little extra, it gets thrown out. Oh my gosh, it's over a hundred degrees there in North Carolina. Oh my goodness, Deborah. All right, so I fold that back. Now we have this perfect quarter inch seam allowance. So next up, I need to get a piece of fabric for this number two now that's as big as this piece here plus the generous seam allowance all the way around. So let's see, I had, is this the one I just ironed? I think it is. So I'm gonna put the right side down and I'm gonna align. I still have this fold in here. I'm gonna align the edge. I'm going to leave a little bit extra, but I want to match up 
like these straight edges, the edge that I just did here. Oh, you know what? I'm going the wrong way here, you guys. We got to go this way. There we go. That looks better. So I need to lay this number two piece on the actual fabric here. So, all right. There we go. I got a generous quarter inch seam allowance there. Got a generous quarter inch over here. And now I need, you know, a piece that's kind of kerchunked like that. So I'm going to just take my scissors here. And I like just cutting blobs. It does not need to be perfect because later we will take care of that with our add a quarter ruler. So I'm just going to go right up like that. Okay. So now I should be able to align those two straight edges. And uh, we will be able to sew our piece onto there. So I'm pretty sure we're going to be good to go uh, with, with these two pieces, but uh, just because the rectangles and the rectangles are relatively easy with foundation paper piecing, your brain can kind of flip the piece up and know where it's going. But just in case, you can pretend so. And I do like giving this a go. So I'm going to take two pins and uh, along that line, that folded line, I'm going to place two pins. And we're going to test to see if I laid this piece of paper in the right or the, the fabric in the right spot here. Oop, get right, get on that line. So again, I've lined up like with right sides together, I've lined up the two edges and uh, um, now I've pinned it and I'm going to pretend as if I'm pressing this open. So we get a little hint of what it's going to look like. And uh, when I flip that over, I just have to make sure, is it covering my number two piece with the, uh, with the generous seam allowance? So we got our seam allowance here, we got it down here, and sure enough, we got a whole pile at the top. So this is perfectly placed right now. I can go to the sewing machine. So let's head over there. Oh, you guys, I'm not sure I know what the freezer paper method of this is. Do you, do you actually iron to the freezer paper? I'll have to check that out. All right, so we still have our leader on here. I don't need that for foundation paper piecing, so I'm going to take that off. Oh, for people who that don't like to tear away all the... Paper? Oh man, I'm gonna have to look into that. I don't, I don't know that process at all. Okay, so flipping it over. Um, all right, so I am going to sew exactly along that pinned line here. Oh, this is this is the back. So what we see here is actually the back. When we flip it this way, then that will be the front, and that will start to that will start to um, appear. So this is actually the mirrored image. So when we flip, it will be uh, backwards to what we were looking at here. So see, when we have it up like that, then, uh, then it's the right side of both fabrics. So right now they're wrong sides together. We'll get the hang of this. I, you know what, I think we're gonna do this for a few uh, weeks here because I have some unfinished foundation paper piece blocks that we need to get done here too. So, all right, I am going to, uh, um, oh, good, Kathy. I will, I'll, uh, I, ha I have to reply to all those yet. Okay, so I'm going to stitch along this line and I'm also gonna stitch within the seam allowance leading up to there. So I can just kind of go on the fold that I made. All right, so I'm gonna just, do a little back tack, and I'm gonna go right on that line. All right, and you know what? I'm gonna make my stitch length a little less too. I forgot to do that. I like stitching with a smaller stitch length for foundation paper piecing, because I think it's easier to tear away the paper later because it's making more uh, perfs. Oh, awesome, Kathy. 
Okay, so let's pull that away. I can snip these ends. I always like to snip my uh, stringy ends each time. So uh, I do the front side just right up against the paper there and then I flip it around and then snip on the fabric side too just because that can get annoying real quick to have all these little stringies around. Oh, good, Kathy! Yay! So, uh, the mail has been going fast, you guys, lately. Uh, people are getting their stuff real quick. Yeah, so that fabric, I think I have... Oh, I think I have like four fat quarter bundles left, period. And then they're all gone. <laughs> You still tear away the paper after, but you can iron. Oh, you use the the freezer paper for... Oh, I'm gonna have to look into that, Vicky. I'm not quite sure. I still can't quite picture it. All right, so this is our first piece, uh, like our first two pieces together, and uh, I am ready to press that. But before I do that, I'm going to just pull away the glue that we did on the first piece just so it doesn't get like super duper attached. It's not a big deal, but when I remember to do it, I just pull it away. Cause now we're sewn to the paper. It's not gonna fall off anymore. All right, so I always press with the uh, printed side down. Cause you don't wanna get all the printing marks on your iron. So I am going to, first of all, I'm gonna finger press this. So I'll open it and then press all the way to the edge, even past where there is sewing. And then I will get the iron out and give it a good press along that seam. All right, and there we go, our first two pieces. It looks crazy right now, but it as we keep sewing, uh, it will start to develop here. Uh, Mary, we are working on the Hello Sunshine block from the Splendid Sampler 2. It is adorable. So we're working on this background area with all of these little yellow strips of fabric. And those are foundation pieced, foundation paper pieced. So the foundation is our pap is paper. The foundation is what we're sewing onto. So it's it's providing a foundation to hold our fabric while we work. All right, and flip it over again. We are done with the number two piece now. So we can move on to number three. So let's pick a fabric first. I'm just kind of grabbing from the top here. This looks as good as any, so let's use that. Oh, Renee, you got, um, is it your, is it that, the cordless iron, the Panasonic cordless iron? Uh, like, like this guy here, uh, I just, it's one of my favorite things ever. <laughs> so nice. All right, so we've picked out our fabric. I am going to prep the piece now. So we need to get our perfect quarter inch seam allowance here so it can line up with our next fabric really well. Yay, Renee! Oh, I'm glad you like it. So I'm gonna get my postcard out again. I'm gonna cover up number two because we're gonna work on number three now. I'm gonna cover up number two and fold on the line in between two and three. Oh, you made two of these, Patricia, and made them into mug rugs, gift for friends. Oh, well, that's super sweet. This is the perfect little uh, mug rug pattern. All right, here you go. Fold that. Okay, Vicky. So I think I kind of get it. I'll have to. I'll have to look at that. Um, look into that some more. So you go like this far and then you press it onto the freezer paper and then it just kind of stays and you can get the line cut easier. I don't know, I'll have to look into that because that'd be fun to try sometime. All right, trim in to my quarter inch. Again, you can get a normal quilting ruler and just uh, put it on the quarter inch mark, but I'm using my add a quarter ruler that has that little lip so I can bump that on and the lip will be a quarter inch. Get rid of that excess. And there we go, our perfect quarter inch uh, seam allowance. 
So we can fold that back. And then we can peek at the front again. Look, it's starting to develop there. Okay, so uh, our third piece here, it's a nice rectangular shape. Um, so I am going to get a straight edge. I already have like a pretty straight edge here on this piece. So I'm going to call that my straight edge. That's what's going to match up with this straight edge. So I'm going to lay that again. I'm going to do the right side down. Anytime I can see the numbers and I'm putting it with fabric, this should be the wrong side and the right side. So if I, so if I, um, if I'm holding everything and flip it, then I should see the right side of the fabric, flip it back the wrong side. Um, this will be like the wrong side. See, I can see the wrong side of the fabric. Uh, the back is the wrong side. Right side. Hopefully that makes sense, you guys. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna lay my number three piece on to the fabric, the back of the fabric here. And this fold, I'm gonna get about a quarter inch from my straight edge. I'm gonna go a little extra just to make sure I have enough fabric. And then once I have that in position, I wanna get, again, a piece that's as big as my number three piece uh, with an extra quarter inch seam allowance, uh, a large quarter inch seam allowance um, all the way around. So I, I, go, I go about a half inch seam allowance actually. And I, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect either at this point because we'll trim it down later. So I'm gonna scooch this over. This is a little too much excess, so I'm just gonna go over like that. Here's our generous seam allowance there. I think we're still lined up at the bottom. So I'm gonna just cut around a blob kind of like that. That will cover up our three piece here. So I'm gonna just trim, blobity blob. I just need to make sure that I still have that generous quarter inch seam allowance. And you can cut these strips beforehand uh, like they did in the book. Again, I'm just not doing that because I have so little fabric that I don't think I can easily cut, cut strips. All right, so here's our piece. This was that straight edge. If I flip this around, that straight edge is what I want to align with this. So right sides together you know, we'll be going up like that. So right sides together, lining up that straight edge with the straight edge that we just cut um, on our piece there. So ultimately, I uh, want it to cover uh, the piece, the number three piece. So if I go down too far like this and fold up, I'm gonna have a little error there. So we're gonna wanna get it kind of placed where I think it should go. I think that looks probably pretty good here but let's do our test sewing again. So my edges are lined up there. I'm gonna go here and find my two little pins that ran off. Two little pins, oh, here they are. Things just run off and, uh, you know, I'm working in a tiny space. They don't really have anywhere to go. Foundation flip in paper, yep. <laughs> All right, so I'm doing my practice sewing, like my fake sewing onto that line. This is our fold line in between number two and number three. So, all right, now I'm gonna pretend to press. The reason for doing this is just to test that we have our fabric in the right spot because you don't wanna mess that up. If you have, um, like if this fabric is just really out of place and I have a big white area there, that's hard to fix. So I'm doing this test before and on. And I can see right here, I'm kind of going off the edge a little bit there and I have a lot over here. So I could have scooched it all up a little bit, but I think if we look at the front, yeah, I think we still have our generous seam allowance. So I'm not gonna worry about it. So we're looking at number three here. I have plenty of seam allowance on this side. I have, an okay amount of seam allowance on this side, so that'll still work. And if I pretend I'm folding on the line, I got a whole pile of seam allowance there too. So we are perfectly fine right here. And that's why I like cutting kind of larger blobs. You know, you are wasting a tiny bit of fabric, but it's just easy on the mind because 
there's less of a chance of you know not having enough fabric to um, you know having it just move a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna fold that back down. I can leave my pins in there. And uh, we're gonna sew along that edge again, and we're gonna sew into the seam allowance as well there. Oh, Nolene, you got your uh, macadamia. Well, it was macadamia nuts, right? Macadamia nutcracker. <laughs> Those are a lot of good, fun choices on Amazon. All right, removing the pins and sewing exactly on this line. All right, let's get this other pin out of the way. Add a little back tack there. All right, there we go. And again, I am going to snip these threads as I go so they don't get super duper duper annoying. All right, flip and get them on this side too. All right, so there is our piece sewn on. Let's go press it, but let's just peek. There we go. So we're starting with each piece. We are carving the pieces beforehand, right? So now our number two piece is uh, pretty much done here. And it's looking cute. So let's give it a press. Back over here. All right, so I always have to move all my stuff every time. So I'm gonna finger press it first, and you can see we're not sewing all the way to the edge, right? So when we finger press, I'm gonna press all the way to the edge as if, as if we did actually sew. It probably doesn't matter so much for this particular design because we have a lot of stitching here and not a lot of excess, but on other foundation paper piecing uh, projects, you'll find that you'll wanna do that finger press all the way the extension of that fold, even where you didn't, didn't, uh... oops, sorry you guys, even where you didn't sew. So it's just a good practice to get into. Got a puzzle hanging out there. But all right, there is our one, two, and three pieces there. So let's move on to piece four, right in the middle. All right, I think this is where I'm gonna grab, we'll take one of from, from this guy here. Now this has all these goofy characters in, oh my gosh. Let's try and use one of these areas that's been totally cut up like, like this down here. Okay, I'm gonna press this. It is an oddball shape for sure. I think we were fussy cutting a piece out of here. So we got a goofy, goofy shape here. All right, so this is gonna be, kind of in here is gonna be our next strip. So let's prep our, um, and we have a good straight edge here already, so I'll use that as my straight edge uh, that will match up to this. So let's uh, flip around. What will I do when I run out of fabric? Will the quilt be done? Oh man, Jana. <laughs> I'd like to think so, but I feel like this is one of those things where um, it looks like I'm running out of fabric, but somehow I'll still get a whole quilt out of it. Like all this fabric seems to multiply when you think you're almost done with it. <laughs> but yeah, I might have to add in some more yellows um, I'm not sure what I have for more yellow, so we'll see. But yeah, because I'm only about halfway done, I, I, I'll probably need a whole lot more. Or we're going to have to get really tricky with how we use all this up. I'm not quite sure. All right, trimming that up. So this is our blobby, crazy looking edge from before. And it doesn't matter because right now we are going to make it perfect. Zoop. All right, so fold that back. All right, our number four piece. So let's flip this around. I need the wrong side down. Or the, I mean the, the right side down. I want, I want to see the wrong side. 
Okay, so let's, I want to lay that number four onto the fabric. Uh, and I want to kind of see this straight edge here because that straight edge, I'm going to line up with my straight edge here with a generous, that generous uh, quarter inch seam allowance. Oh, I could raid my mom's stash. <laughs> well, um, I may have to do that. <laughs> mom's trying to clean up all of her fabric and get organized and and see what she has. So it might be a good time to steal all her yellows right now. <laughs> all right, so I need a shape that's as big as that number four plus the generous seam allowance. So I'm gonna pop up here like this and I need I need like a to cut down like at that angle there. So I'm gonna just flip this out of the way. And just trim along down. I think that'll do. All right. So let's flip it over and I want to line up. I want to just kind of go like that. I want to line up my straight edges. So let's do our test. A little foldy test. I want to hold those so they stay lined up. I might because I, you know, after pulling out all these yellows here, it is looking pretty slim. And if I add more yellow, I don't want to just add a pile of a pile of yellow when these are all done because then the blocks will look totally different. Um, so I will need. I want to blend these fabrics in with any new ones. So I, I want to get new ones in probably earlier than later. Ooh, it's gonna have a little kitty face in. All right, this is my test my test pressing. So again, um, did it cover, you know, we got our generous quarter inch seam allowance there and there. And what about on top for the four? Oh yeah, tons. So, all right, our four, number four piece looks like it's going to be a-okay. Let's flip it back and sew that together. Sewing along those lines again. All right. I like keeping the pins in, especially on like longer, long, skinny pieces like this. Cause if you just try and hold it there, it'll flop around everywhere. So leaving those pins in after the test is, is helpful sometimes. All right. From seam allowance to seam allowance. All right. Add a little back tack. This is actually good practice for sewing in a straight line. <laughs> Cause I mean, I can feel myself wiggle around a little bit and I think I probably do that during sewing actual seams too. Good practice. All right, we'll snip that. And again, let's snip these little ends off. So with foundation paper piecing, once you get the kind of rhythm down, it gets really relaxing and, and nice. Um, like I said earlier, it takes me a little bit of time to get back into it and remember all the steps. But once once I do, then you get this kind of nice, uh, nice thing going, nice rhythm. Where you're just, you're like, you're getting your pieces prepped. So iron, prep, so iron, and you just kind of do that trio over and over again. All right, so let's finger press this all the way to the edge. Extend it past our sewing line. And then give it a little press. All right, so here's the right side of our piece so far. Looking good. All right, so we're done with four. We just have three more to go. All right, let's flip it down. What is next? So there's two fabrics that I, two fabrics that I had more of and I wanted to use those more than once. And I think this was one of them. So let's do, let's do this for number five. We'll grab a different one for number six and then we'll bring this one back again that we just used for number seven. Uh, just cause those are the two fabrics that I wanted to use more. 
of just because I have more of more fabric of those. All right, what do we got going on here? All right, let's uh, where should we do this one? We got kind of this big goofy angled piece right here that's straight. Why don't we press right there and use use that? I always like starting with a straight edge if I can, but if if there's none to be had, I'll just trim one. All right. Right side and wrong side. This one's always hard to tell, this particular fabric. Gosh, I still can't really tell. Okay, I think this is the this is the right side, so I'm gonna flip it down. But before we get too far, let's prep our um, number five piece. So what we're doing again is getting our nice quarter inch seam allowance. So let's get our postcard. I'm gonna get you guys more straight down here, I think. I don't know if that really helped. Okay. Postcard on the line in between four and five. I always expose the piece that I'm working on and cover up everything that happened before. That's kind of how I like remembering it. Because there's lots of lines, you know, with foundation paper piecing and you don't want to get confused on what lines that you're folding. So I always expose the piece that I'm working on and cover up um, the pieces that I've done already. And I ignore everything that comes after. So six and seven, I'm not even thinking about those. I'm only worried about five and covering up everything that happened before, which is all those guys. So, all right, we got our nice quarter inch seam allowance. Uh, now let's get our fabric here. This is that straight edge that I want to deal with. I want to make sure that the five piece is on the fabric versus this way where it where it's off the fabric. So I want to line the five, lay the five on the fabric. I'm going to flip it up just to make sure I'm parallel with that straight edge with the generous seam allowance and I think we are good. Now I need the generous seam allowance around that five piece. So let's just, uh, I can do it with a rotary cutter too. We'll go up like this, tuck in like this. Get our generous seam allowance there. And then come down like that. All right, that should do the job. Oop, missed a little area there. Nice thing is you can do blobs for for this cutting so that I round it out there and whatever as long as it's a quarter inch then we're good. So all right those straight edges let's mat fold them together and right sides together and match up those straight edges. Kind of just placing it where I think this will go. Now let's do our test. So holding that together Gosh, it's still hard to tell what's the right and wrong side. Yeah, we did it right. Man, I think that's why I haven't used that fabric too much yet. I get it confused. Oh, you fold all the lines before you start? That's a good idea. I kind of, I wait. Uh, for th something like this, it would have been okay, I think, for me to fold all the lines first. But I tend to like to wait because on really intricate foundation, paper piecing um, bits, there's angles and lines going all over the place. So you will have like some crazy origami folded piece. Um, and that's sometimes confusing to me when I have all those folded lines. So I like to fold them as I go. Oh, I have my cutting glove right here. I should get that on, shouldn't I, Nolene? All right, oh, we're in the middle of our test here. So I have it pinned, my fake sewing, so let's, Fake iron it. I think we're looking good. Let's flip around, do our test. The test is, oop, falling off the edge here. The test is, did we cover up our number five, ouch, and still get our generous seam allowance? So we have our generous seam allowance there for sure. Generous seam allowance there. Did we get it on top? Yep, we're good. So we can fold that back and sew. I need a glove so I don't poke myself with pins. That's what I need a glove for. 
And that's why I tend to use wonder clips now in general, but for this pretend pressing, these pins work the best still. Okay, that's that. Trim that and trim off the little thread ends. And I, I trim it right up against the paper and the fabric here. We put that little back tack at the beginning and the end, and that just means going forward once, then backwards once, and then forward again. That kind of locks the ends in place. So it, if I pull on this, it shouldn't it shouldn't come apart. Whereas if I didn't do that back tack, it might it might tear apart if you start handling it a lot. All right, let's go over here again. My temporary mess. All right, let's. Fold this, finger press it, and then give it a real press. Okay. And there we go. Uh, just two more pieces left there. Let's do it. All right, so I wanted to use a different fabric this time, and uh, then we will get this, uh, that goofy fabric here that I have a lot of. We'll do that for the last piece. So what do we have here again? We have, did I use them all yet? Oh, I didn't use this piece, let's do this. Oh, I know, this is the piece that I was saving for, what's this? I think this might've been the piece I was saving for the outside, so yeah, let's don't use that. That's my saver piece. You know what? I think maybe we'll just use these little flowers again. Although we do have a lot of this. I'm gonna use this instead because I think this is my only flower piece left. Whereas I think I have another piece of, of this fabric. So we'll, um, we'll do that for our number six piece. I think that looks pressed enough for the time being. All right, postcard. Um, we're working on six now, so I'm going to expose six and cover up everything that came before. And that's the line I'm worried about. So fold it up on the line. Find the add a quarter ruler. And then trim. And again, if you don't have the add a quarter ruler, you can just use a normal ruler and just put a, a quarter inch on there. Okay, fold that back. We're ready to place our number six piece. So our right side needs to be down. Get all the fuzzles out of the way. Actually, I'm just gonna trim those. I could get a nice clean edge again, but I think we're still fine with with the edge that we got here. All right, so lay that number six on the fabric, then flip this up and see if our straight edge is parallel here. I think we're looking pretty good. All right, now do we have our generous seam allowance? So I think we're fine there. I need to trim down like that. I'm gonna use the scissors this time again. So I need a generous seam allowance there. We already have a seam allowance here, so I'm just gonna get kind of close. But here, I need to trim about like that. All right, that looks like a good generous seam allowance. And let's see, let's just kind of snip up from the bottom here. There, I think that'll do. Okay. Oh yeah, Chad is Chad is such a funny kitty. All right, let's line up our 
are straight edges. He's kind of, he's a goo, he's an outdoor kitty for sure. He was a stray. Um, he was either left by someone or he was just an outside cat. So uh, my parents fed him and all that. And, you know, now he hangs around. And uh, uh, so he's lives outside. But he's so funny because if you're in a seated position, he's going to sit on your lap. <laughs> and it is your honor like that he's sitting in your lap. <laughs> it's on his terms and uh, you know, you better get to get to the petting. He's just funny. I like him. He'll yell at you if you move him from your lap to He has almost a cartoon meow. <laughs> like he he makes a lot of uh He's like a lot of vowel noises uh, to his meow. All right, we got our generous seam allowance all the way around, so we're placed okay. Flip. Boy, I like him. Little Chad. All right, it's just this piece, and then we only have one more after this. So it's almost 9.30, but I think we'll go ahead and do our one extra piece just so we can have this part done. All right, trim. We are going to trim off all of these edges too. So we'll clean up this whole guy. All right, let's finger press it and then press it for real. Got a little stack of fabric going there. Foundation paper piecing does tend to mess up a work area <laughs> with little bits of paper, little scraps, your fabrics flying everywhere, tools everywhere, but it's worth it. I, I really enjoy this process a lot. It's kind of magic, like where you had all these oddball shapes, now you all of a sudden have like a perfectly perfect um, piece. So all right, one more, one more to do. We're just on that number seven piece and then this center area sunshine is done. All right. So we're going to use this fabric again. Let's see, where should we go now? Let's try and do this goofy bump out here so we can, you know, I'm trying to, trying to use up fabric and not waste it and all that. So let's see if that will work. So this has a little nick out of it. I may need to trim this. Let's see how it works first. So I'm going to lay it with the right side down. All right, I'm trying to use this piece here. It's messy, but I love paper piecing. Exactly, Catherine, that's that's how I feel. What I love, actually it's the messiness that I love because out of something so seemingly messy, like I'm just cutting blobs, I'm hardly, I'm like not measuring at all. Um, you know, look at this wacky edge all over the place, but something so messy turns out so perfectly clean and intricate. So, you know, I mean, it's hard to tell all we're doing stripes here, but you know, if you remember like the clock one that we did, that was a pretty detailed foundation paper piecing. That, you know, you can get these perfectly curved edges just made out of lots of different straight edges. You get, you can design whole pictures that are perfectly clean. Our, our um, seam allowances are gonna be perfect. It's kind of magic that you can get all that out of, out of the messiness. All right, I think I'll be able to put this right here just perfectly. So good. I think this will work. There is a little nick out of it right here that I have to pay attention to, um, but I think we might have enough without that. So let's prep this piece first. Cover everything up except for the one we're working on, number seven. Flip that over. 
Here, I'll do this with a, a normal ruler just so you guys can see it. So I'm gonna lay this on, we'll go on, I have a quarter inch marking on it here. We'll lay the quarter inch marking on my fold. See, it's just a little more piddly. I have to, I have to, um, more putsy. I have to line it up. I have to hold it down and hope I don't move it and all that. Whereas the add a quarter ruler, I just bop it on and I can cut it right away without even thinking. But a normal ruler works as well. All right, so let's try and get this piece. I am worried about that nick. So I think I'm going to go up a little higher. I want a generous seam allowance out, out this way. Yeah, exactly, Jane. It's kind of magic. All right, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to trim this. I'm going to cut my straight edge a straight edge here, but I'm going to trim this out first. Normally I would cut the straight edge first, but I'm going to just follow the same line. So I need that generous seam allowance around the outside of this piece here. So up like that. And we'll just trim it like there. That'll work. And uh, again, like I said, I'm going to just quickly trim off that edge there. This will be our new straight edge. I did leave enough for that and we will do our test to make sure that test is kind of magic too. All right, so that's our straight edge. It needs to align with this straight edge. So right sides together. All right, I'm kind of placing it where I think it should probably work, but we're gonna do our test. <laughs> yep, bop it on, add it to the, to the dictionary. <laughs> All right, I think I moved this a little bit. Oh no, it's just kind of folded over funny. All right, I think we're good. Hold those edges and flip. Get those pins in there on that edge. So you don't have to, this is really for a test. If you did, if it's very obvious that your piece is gonna work, you don't have to do it, but I always err on the side of testing because you never know, especially you're flipping shapes backwards and uh, the right side, wrong sides, things can get a little screwy, especially, you know, with triangles. So to picture in your head how this is gonna flip up and if it's gonna perfectly cover all that, that can be difficult. So I, I always test um, to make sure. So I've done my fake sewing with those pins and I'm gonna do my fake, my test, uh, iron and I can already tell that I'm covering that edge. So I think we are, we cut more than enough here. So yep, plenty of seam allowance around there. That's perfect. Oh, Catherine, oh no. All right, let's sew. This is our last seam here. We'll press this and then we'll trim around the whole deal. There we go. Oop, rotate a little bit more. Thread was stuck in the bobbin still. All right, let's trim. And do this side. All right, let's finger press that and uh, press it. Scooch all my stuff out of the way again. All right, finger press the edges there. Oh, this is a, a lot of sweet little yellows. I like it. I got that little kitty in twice, it looks like. Boop, boop. All right, and we are done with all of our pieces here. 
So the only thing, oh, well, there's a couple places, a couple things to do yet. Um, we need to trim around the side. All our pieces are done, but we need to do that extra last little trim and then take out the papers. But I think we'll leave the papers for, oh man, I was going to say, let's leave the papers for tomorrow. But once I get this far, I want to, I want to take the papers out so it's done. But let's just double check that that is what we do. Um, yep, press and remove the paper. Okay, that's what we'll do. This isn't, this isn't a lot of paper, so I think we should still do it. But to start out, let's trim. So I'm going to actually use this inside line, this actual line, as my guide. I'm not going to use this dotted edge line. Uh, if I want it perfect, I will go on this line. So I'm going to put the quarter inch mark on that line. And this is why I didn't cut so perfectly at the beginning either, because I knew I, that wasn't the important line. The important line is that solid line on the pieces. So there we go. Trimming that. So this is the end of us getting all the perfect clean edges. So like how we are using the add a quarter ruler to get perfect seam allowances. This gets our, this last trim gets our perfect outer edges. And you'll get to see those seam allowances um, really soon here once we take all the paper off. And once you start doing some more intricate uh, foundation paper piecing, it gets really exciting to see all those uh, little perfect seam allowances. So look how clean it looks! Like magically it just looks like a finished perfectly clean beautiful piece. So all right, let's get rid of this paper. Uh, one thing I like to do is kind of grab both ends and kind of give it a little pull. Sometimes that will get it started. Doesn't seem like it's doing that. So I'm just gonna pick up one edge here. Ooh, it still has some glue that it's sticking to. I'm gonna just start tearing. So each little sewn line, we have done a, like hundreds of little perforation marks, like perforated paper just from the needle going through the fabric. So that should make it pretty easy to tear away. So now let's, let's give it a little pull again. Oh, there we go. So now you can see it's starting to pop off. I think we're gonna have to go through each one and tear it away. I like to, um, you don't wanna be too aggressive with this because it might catch on a little, uh, seam here and there. So I I like to be a little careful. Like here it's getting stuck in there. So I'm going to just kind of carefully pull that fabric away or that paper away. Sometimes, you know, people say you have a little tweezers to pull it out. Little paper edges. But, you know, if tiny little bits of paper end up being in there in the seams, that'll dissolve eventually, most likely. Yay, but look at those seam allowances. Everything is perfect. That's what I love about foundation paper piecing. It just takes the most intricate design that you can't even wrap your head around and makes it uh, just doable and with perfect seam allowances and you don't even have to measure and you can cut blobs and it still ends up perfect. So there we go. That is our center area. Um, Already all done. Paper's done. So this will be our center for our adorable little Hello Sunshine block. So there we are. Cute, 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 cute. All right, you guys. So that's it for tonight. I'm going to flip you around and we'll take a look at this. Hello. So that was fun. I haven't done a uh, foundation paper piecing in a long time here again. We have, I have some unfinished paper pieced blocks for this. So we'll, uh, after this uh, sunshine block is done, we'll, we'll get those ones out um, just so I can get, get these done. Ju, you're on your hundredth block. Congrats. That is awesome. Oh, you, did you guys see my mom's splendid sampler too? She's completely done with hers. I sent a, a photo in an email a couple days ago 
uh, of her quilt. Uh, she did hers entirely in black and white and it just turned out so pretty. But all right, here we go. There is our uh, foundation paper piece. Little kitty heads up there. <laughs> there we go, perfect seam allowances on back. Looking good. All right, so uh, we'll continue on this block tomorrow uh, for Thursday and uh, and Friday as well. So uh, this is uh, Thursday and Friday's project. We might be able to get it done by then, I think. So that'll be cool. We'll be doing applique, I think, tomorrow. Uh, and then some a little bit of embroidery yet too. So have a great evening, you guys. I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. And I'll be back here again tomorrow at uh, on the Penguin and Fish Facebook page at 8.30 p.m. Central, 9.30 Eastern, and 6.30 Pacific. So thanks again. See you then. Good night.